Well, here we are, and it's a bit of a chilly day. Uh, minus 15 to be exact. It started out the morning at minus 20, and uh, it's going to be a relatively short video today, which is going to allow me an opportunity to add in a, uh, a little shout out to some folks that uh, I need to express appreciation to. But before that, let's jump into the subject matter. So uh, this is going to be about magnetic block heaters. And uh, you'll see I've got a little something plugged in underneath here. I just moved it a minute ago because I was adjusting the cord for this shoot. And uh, uh, that block heater and another have been a real lifesaver for me this winter. Uh, this machine was, I purchased it used with about 500 and some hours on it. And it had been stored indoors in a heated space so the owner had never put a block heater into it i assumed that living up here in this area any piece of equipment would have a block heater but it didn't and while i'm entirely capable mechanically of installing a block heater under ideal conditions and you'll see there's a a little plug right back in there in the block i don't know how well this camera is going to pick it up but uh, that would accommodate a block heater. But uh, there's some plumbing and other things to remove. And the other side of this engine is the same. So I found a little spot in there for a magnetic block heater. And that one stays there permanently. And then I've got another block heater under there. And I put it onto the pan. And just to remind myself to remove it, I always... Uh, loop the cord through the door handle so I don't absent-mindedly drive away forgetting that I put a block heater uh, or that I'm plugged into something so there we go and here's hoping I don't completely embarrass myself now having done that build up to the magnetic block heaters and uh, let's see if we can fire this thing up but uh, before we do uh, Hey, I just want to uh, say a special appreciation to all of our viewers. Uh, I woke up this morning and uh, checked the YouTube channel and wow, 600 subscribers. Thank you, a huge thanks. And here's the specific reason that I'm thanking you. It's very selfish. Uh, as we built this little 82 Maple community of viewers, uh, Wow, you're doing some amazing things in terms of advice, alternate perspectives, suggestions, tips, techniques. I read a book recently called 4,000 Weeks, uh, which is essentially the uh, 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 expected lifespan, barring accident or, or some serious illness. And I've got, uh, by my calculation, about a thousand weeks of active living left, meaning the time that I can fully enjoy my tractors, my ATVs, the chickens, uh, building a greenhouse for coral, my little uh, uh, woodworking projects. And, uh, but you know, time is finite. And so your tips, tools, techniques, uh, suggestions, connections, uh, reduce my frustration, increase my enjoyment, and make me much more efficient than I really am. So uh, just uh, uh, a note of thanks, and in particular to uh, some of those that have contributed most recently to the comments sections. Okay, so from the driver's seat here, uh, Al Dredsky. Thank you for all of your super practical suggestions. And adding to that, the Bradleys of Catbird Hill, the old man and the saw, Desert Hobo, Carol Warner, Sawing with Sandy. You'll see and enjoy their comments down below here. So now let's turn the key and see what we can do. I'm going to focus in here on the dash and uh, you're going to see my little glow plug light stay lit here it's probably going to stay lit for i don't know about 15 seconds typically 
Here's hoping I don't embarrass myself again. Well, that wasn't too bad. It wasn't like a start on a summer day, but here's the deal. We have a cold battery, we've got cold oil, and a cold engine block. And again, my choices in terms of solutions for a cold start, uh, I could have tried to install the engine block myself. I could have taken 90 minutes, loaded the unit up on a warm day, taken it into the dealer, left it with them for a few days in the uh, queue for the shop, and uh, paid a $500 bill, labor and parts, another 90 minutes to go and retrieve it and bring it home, or throw these uh, magnetic block heaters on. They uh, run about $75 a piece, all taxes in, shipping included here in Canada. And while I was at it, bonus, I grabbed a couple more uh, because I've got the little uh, gray tractor sitting over there, which when I was a kid, we would keep in a warm shop during the summer. It does not have a block heater. And would you believe, Coral had a steel stock tank for her animals, slapped one on the outside of that and keeps the ice off uh, on at least that part of the tank so the animals have easy access to water. I know there's other stock heaters. We were short one, slapped one on there, worked like crazy. The other thing that I sometimes use one of these for is on my little Norwood sawmill where I have the full hydraulics package. I typically will not run the sawmill in anything lower than minus five. Uh, that's Celsius, so what are we, kind of 20 degrees Fahrenheit, give or take. Tough on blades, tough on equipment, uh, frozen logs, etc. Uh, but down to about minus five, I just like to keep that oil, get that oil warmed up a little bit before firing. And uh, there we have it. So uh, I think that's a wrap on this. I put a couple links in below. Uh, if you check out uh, comments on the product reviews, you'll see a couple of people saying, and I don't know if it was uh, magnetic heaters by the same manufacturer as the one that I use. Uh, here's a shot of the one that I use. It's by Temro. But somebody said one of theirs melted down and they thought it could, uh, pieces fell onto the floor and they thought it could be a fire hazard. You know what? When I have a floor, <laughs> it's going to be inside a heated shop out here on the snow. I wasn't too concerned about that. Uh, maybe I should be. Drop a comment in below. Right now, I've got to get at it. I've got work to do. Uh, incidentally, I only plug these heaters in three hours before the time that I hit the key here and fired this. So that's not bad. I would have had a quicker start, and I have had a quicker start, where I left it plugged in overnight. Uh, but uh, I've got a blade back here, and if you haven't watched the episode on the Frontier 8-foot blade, I'm throwing in the link below. There's a whole little saga around that. Too much tractor for too little blade, or too little blade for too much tractor. And uh, that blade's going back to the uh, John Deere dealer today. And uh, they're just absolutely fabulous, and I'm sure we'll get that sorted. So taking these eight fingers and two thumbs and putting them to work here at 82 Maple. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the journey. Thanks for your advice and comments. Wow. Uh, with some of the challenges one can face, it could be pretty lonely. Great to have this community.